Hello, my name is Raymond McLeod and I work with Westec Industrial Limited. I'm the technical services lead. Today we'll be looking at the Quasar 900 LEL open path detector as well as a Quasar 950 H2S open path detection system. We'll be looking at the theory, the specifications, how to do the alignment, the zero, and some maintenance features. The detection system consists of a transmitter and a receiver. The entire system is a line of sight system whereby there should be no obstructions between the transmitter and the receiver. The system generates a infrared beam for the LEL and the UV beam for the H2S. The receiver picks it up. It is important to note that if a gas cloud comes between the components, the gas cloud will absorb some of the transmitted energy from the transmitter and the receiver picks that up and there is a comparison between the transmitted beam and a reference beam. The ratio of the absorbed beam to the reference beam is a direct correlation of the gas concentration. What this simply means is that the system obeys what you call the Bayer's amber law, and gases will absorb infrared as well as UV energy, and that energy is compared to a reference wavelength which remains unchanged, and then that is compared or is in direct correlation to the gas concentration. The detection system operates on a 18 to 32 VDC voltage. The operating temperature is minus 55 to plus 65 degrees C. So the system is quite robust and it will not be affected by harsh weather conditions like rainfall, snow, or high temperatures as long as it's within the operating uh, temperature range. The maximum separation distance between the transmitter and the receiver for the Quasar 900 LEL open path detection system is 200 meters depending on the model, while the maximum separation distance for the Quasar 950 H2S open path system is 60 meters. It is important to note that 90% of the work uh, done during installation um, is concerned with alignment of the detector itself. Open plot detection systems need a clear line of sight without any obstructions, and it has to be aligned with a telescope so that the cross hairs are centered onto the center of the receiver in this case. And the same process is repeated whereby the telescope is bolted onto the face of the receiver and the crosshairs are in the center of the transmitter. Okay. After alignment, if perfect alignment was not achieved, adjustment in alignment can be done by the fine adjustment screws located at the bottom. So you have to turn the screws with your fingers in opposite directions to get a tightening motion or to just back it off a little bit. And then you can repeat the process by checking the alignment once again to make sure that the crosshairs are at the center of the receiver in this case. And if you bolt the telescope onto the receiver, then the crosshairs of the telescope is in the center of the transmitter in this case. Once alignment is achieved, a zero should be done, a zero calibration that is. That is to say, you're accepting the alignment as being the reference point for the detection system. Once you're about to do this, ensure that there are no gases or there are no obstructions in the line of sight of the detector. In other words, the path is clear. To do the zero, you can do it three or four ways actually. You can use the supplied magnet in the kit and swipe it along the sides of the receiver three times. So you put the detection system in alignment mode, standby mode, and then a zero is done. Okay, 
You can use the heart communicator as well, or a Trex, and it comes with a cable, a specialized cable, and uh, you fit the cable onto the receiver, and on the maintenance mode, you dial into the system and select zero calibration. Once a, calibra a zero calibration is done, the unit is pretty much ready for detecting gases. For the LEL system, the unit of measure is the LEL meter, whereby the gas concentration is multiplied by the distance, that is the distance of the width of the cloud in that sense. And the units of measure for the H2S system is the PPM meter. Same concept, whereby it's a product of the concentration multiplied by the width of the gas cloud to get a reading. The scale of the LEL system is 0 to 5 LEL meter, and the scale of the H2S system is 0 to 500 ppm meters. In terms of maintenance, the detection system, once it's installed, once the zero calibration is done, you can do a filter response test by fitting specialized filters on the face on the receiver end, and the transmitted beam is projected through the filter, and uh, the receiver picks it up, and this is a simulation of uh, gas concentration. Once an alignment has been achieved and the zero calibration has been successfully done, it becomes necessary to simulate a response from the detection system. This can be done by fitting a supplied filter onto the face of the receiver and then taking the output signal with your heart communicator with the supplied cable or watching the 40 20 milliamp signal back at your PLC. There are two supplied filters in the LEL kit. One is for a low response and the other is for a high response. One of the frequently asked questions is, what is involved in the maintenance of the detection system? The answer is not very much. The detection system should be checked around about every six to 12 months. This involves a visual inspection of the lens, looking to make sure that nothing is in the path of the line of sight of the detection system, and cleaning off the lens if required, if there is contaminant buildup or dust, clean it off with water, or if you have an isopropyl alcohol and a clean towel, just wipe it off. After this is done, it becomes necessary to confirm the alignment as in cleaning the face of the lens, the alignment or the detector itself may have shifted. One of the frequently asked questions is, why choose an open path detection system over a traditional point detection system? Well, one of the main reasons is, Point detection system rely on the accumulation of gas at the sensor. An open path detection system does not rely on the accumulation of gas. As long as the gas cloud cuts across the path of the beam, take into consideration of course the placement and positioning of the receiver and transmitter and a clear line of sight of the detection system. Specifically with windy conditions in applications where it's on the outdoors and it's quite windy the open path detection system definitely has the advantage there is no quarterly calibrations required in fact there's no annual calibrations or calibrations required at all 